can you feel it? It's like being near a fire right now. I'm standing in the sun with my left side. Ooh, I just put my hand in front of the sun and I feel my things cool down. Let's put the right side in the sun. Oh yeah. I feel so good. Oh, I'm about to get out of the middle of the road. Here comes the car. The car will run me over. This will not be good. After you've been alive for a while, you know, you've seen quite a bit of things. You've experienced a lot of things, lots of things. But sometimes it's as if what you've experienced is bigger than what you can explain. In particular, I'm speaking of what happens to you when you go out and you live in the woods alone for a while. I, I sometimes finally speak of time that I spent living in a uh, living in the very middle of a 53 acre spot in the middle of nowhere in fact living on about 12 to 15 miles outside of a town of about 200 people called hermitage arkansas so way out there in the middle of a pine forest 53 acres on the side of a little rolling hill there beside the uh, uh beside the river near the river as a crow fry, flies fries I fry me up some crow right there and get me some deer going no we ain't gonna do that nope but as a as a crow as a crow as a crow flies you know less than a mile from the river and that's 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 treacherous to there because that's that's the uh you know that's the shady side of the river not the high bank side the shady side you know but anyway, so uh, over there it was, uh, you know, it, it went from about 300 and something feet above sea level down to about, um, I don't know, probably uh, uh, it's about a, it's about 100. Yeah, it's about what it was. I think it was like 99 feet or something like that. Around, around 100 feet above sea level. Uh, and it was it, it terminated, the property terminated at the edge or into a, a little creek there at the bottom of the little flowing hill. It was, you know, say uh, five acres wide and ten acres long, something like, something along those dimensions. Uh, eh, you know, something like that. And, um, yeah, that's about right. And uh, so, and it, and it was it still with bamboo and pine and it was right there beside the river and, uh, it's a little bit west of the river, actually, but um, birds that fly along the river, a lot of times from their vantage point, they miss curves and they just fly right over whatever straight, you know, to get to the next curve where they have to turn. You know, a lot of them are just little, sometimes they turn into oxbows, you know, like a little twist and turn of the river. Sometimes the ducks just fly straight. You know, they're not flying all the way across the top of the water there, you know. They're up in the air and they're boogieing it. And they're just on a on a on a path. And uh a lot of times um they'll fly over you. And that place there, I don't know if it's the, the geography of the land, how it's a big U and I was on one side of the U and it was covered the part that I was on whenever I had one of the most spiritual experiences you'll ever experience this is whenever it's hard to put it in words but you realize that you're one with the whole thing that's the next part of the the whole equation you know um, is uh, when you're in those moments and you you've been around for a while and your experiences and you just and you, you remember more than you should because you've had some kind of a profound experience but let me finish my story about my profound experience Anyway, so I was standing under under these big 50, 60, 70, 80 year old pine trees. They were huge trees. They may have been older than that. I don't know. They were just huge trees. 
you know, two or three of me wide. I mean, it was just huge. And I was up under there. There's like a stand of them. It's like a little five acre area there, six, seven, eight acres, whatever it was. And they were, you know, they weren't just jack, you know, slammed together. There was some distance, you know, five or 10, 15, 20 feet from each other, you know, maybe further. Uh, 30, 40, 50 feet, whatever it was, or just a, a nice little lay of pine trees uh, that had been a house spot and everything cleared out from under it. And it's just, uh, that's where I live now too, a different one. But under that, whenever those birds fly over, and these were just all pine, I'm talking about all pine, and those needles and that wind and the way that those ducks all together, those geese actually in the case that I'm talking about, they were flying over the top of those pine trees and the wind was doing what it was doing. It was a lay of the land. There was a U-shape. and the, All of this shit came together one day and made this sound that I'd never heard in my entire... It was a swirling, gurgling, uh, pleasant sound. It was, it was like a... It was... It was what you would experience with, an, you know, hearing a nice little creek running water after a rain, you know, just kind of rolling down, you know, after a while, the flood's gone, it's just the, the runoff water. You're sitting there and you can hear it, it's kind of bubbling along. It didn't sound exactly like that, but it had the same kind of feeling. It was just very relaxing. You could just listen to it. You could experience it. And it was a very experiencing thing too, because it's kind of like those wings were all in sync. You know, whenever one's wings moved up and down, the other ones did too, and it just pulled everything. It just was in this symbiotic relationship with the uh, earth and the wind and the trees and the needles and uh, and me, you know. And it was I, I was the only one right up under it. It was just, it was a very powerful experience. It was just, I could just feel the energy of it. And that's all it was, probably, was just energy, which everything's just energy and information. Um, but that that changed things for me. That's really the first time that I really ever felt connected to things. I felt like I was a part of this thing, you know. Um, whenever you live out there, you go out there alone and you spend time meditating and just staring at leaves, you know. It's like I had a cousin tell me, he said, well, Brad, chill out. I just go out there and I get me a joint and I put my mouth and I lean up against the tree and I burn a hole in a leaf. I find me a leaf and burn a hole in it is what he would say. And that's really a pretty good thing to do, you know. Uh, you're not, and you don't really try not to think about anything. You just clear your mind and just look at that leaf and try to keep up with it. Right now, I'm trying to keep up with this crow out there. He's hanging out where those ducks hang out in my front yard. There's a squirrel there, too. They're absolutely beautiful. I love that crow right there. I'm not going to go mess with him because he get mad at me and say, Brad, you, you're being unreasonable. You're attacking me when I'm trying to eat this delicious food. Okay, enough of that. Yes, I could not finish my story in that little metal roof building, my barbecue barn. I have to tell you about that another day. But so if you've had enough experiences in life and you've, I don't know, you, you remember so much, you know, you've forgotten much more than you can ever remember. And number two, you've, uh, you know, you've been around for a long time and you've had some kind of a spiritual experience. So some type of experience it doesn't even have to be deemed spiritual you don't have to call it that but you just realize that you're a part of something you know some people call it I mean I guess it could be uh, religion you know it could be a spiritual it could be uh, it could just be you know you know I'm part of the pack you know you know it doesn't have to be revealed in such a manner as you know birds flying over your head but different things can it can come to you in different different kinds of ways because everybody's eyes see something different because their experiences are different, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just a, you know, a person that grew up 
you know, outside of a small town. And oh my goodness, I must take a picture of this. We're gonna let this be the uh, cover of this. Because that's what I see right now. Mm. I think that's a pretty good reflection for the type of mood I'm in today. But also, maybe in that picture, there you'll see something that helps me remember more than I should. And I think it's just uh, been around for a long time. Um, uh, that's, that's not ex exactly the perfect example. But it's a good example. Because in my mind, whenever I see a stand of trees... And there's some parts of the property that look more like it than others, but that could do it. But whenever I see trees near a cleared area, and it's just a, like a small jut of trees, like a little line of trees, like maybe by a stream or just, uh, you know, some kind of a grove of trees somewhere doing something. And, and it's like the lower branches are gone, and there's mostly just something going on at the top. You'll see this in the spring around in my part of the country because, the, you know, the top of the trees kind of fill at first and then whew, it goes down. Seems like it anyway in terms of the leaves. But uh, so you have these tall, skinny, you look out there on your horizon, you see these tall, tr skinny trees with stuff at the top. I've seen this type of thing in Africa. I've seen it in the spring, wherever I'm at in lots of places. I've seen it with just pine trees, deciferous trees, totally removed from the situation. So just pine trees are like that anyway. Certain breeds are it's just a poof of something at the top. In fact, pine trees may be the best example of what I'm talking about. I, uh, in fact, there's the maybe even the photo that we use for outside of the grid. It's just a line of trees, and there's a sunshine behind it. You know, um... It's just, uh, whenever I see that, I see a long time ago. I see something that I probably should not see. I know that whenever I see that, at certain times, when I'm in a certain frame, it's as if Mother Nature pulls up her skirt and lets me see what's going on, you know. Or the uh, stage master pulls back the curtain and lets me see behind the stage. Or lets me see out into the audience, you know, whatever it may be, you know. It's like you get the look, you get the look behind. You get to see the, you look, you look at under the hood, you know, you're looking at what's going on underneath. You know, there, there's something there, you know, there's a, there's a consistency there. You know, over time, uh, there's always change, but there's a consistency. And, you know, a lot of it is in things that are older than us humans, and it's these trees. These trees, I mean, they're, they're like, you know, the Native Americans, they would call them, uh, you know, the knowledge keepers, you know, because they would be totems sometimes, and there would be things carved into them. And, and then as the tree grows, you know, it would, uh, you know, it would change, and, uh, but history would be kept there. And then, then, and then they just knew that they drank so much water, so they consumed, and they were these, you know, like the, and a human has to do it, and it's like brain and mystery and memory, you know, and stone is a real deep memory, the deepest of memory. I mean, you know, so um, the family bears, the trees are, uh, there's just something about it, you know. I can get, I can get, oh yeah, I can get down to the, to the cat holes there, but, but the reality of it is, is that I see those line of trees, and I see the sun, and uh, I know that that's been going on for a long, I know that I've been seeing that particular photo, I, I've been having that particular experience for a long, long time, and when I say I, I mean my genetic structures, it's just, it's just a digital file with one off. You know, if you look at someone's DNA, it's kind of like what you would get from, um, uh, you know, the, the DNA difference between a percentage between a, a, a person and their son. You know, well, let's give it a, di a little bit different name. Well, let's put the date born different there. And then, you know, uh, this is on a different type hard drive, so we have to 
compensate for them. Uh, you know, they did it for genetic structures, and that that they have a new hard drive now. I mean, you know, so it's, you know, it's 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 you can you can figure it out. You know, the digital thing is very analogous, analogous, analogous to us. Um. Uh, so. You know, and of course, you know, there's certain things safe there. It's the same. You know, the same little things, same energy, the same hair, maybe the same facial features, the same brow ridge. You know, whatever it is, it's, it's there's things that are there. It's the uh, it's the eternal consciousness. It's the uh, you know, it's the one. You know, it's it's the creator. It's the uh, one and the all. It's God. It's it's the uh, it's the universe. It's Mother Nature. It's uh, Father Time. The birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees and a little thing called love. Okie dokie. I'm done now. I appreciate you listening to this. If you made it this far, you're a very strange person. But I will be praying for you because I know you need more prayers than I do for listening to this crazy this long. But anyway, I love you so much. And I, I, I really do. I want you to know and be happy. Just like Bobby McFadden said, don't worry. Yes. yes. Wow. I could not finish each story. story. And we've seen quite a bit of things. Metal roof building. I bought people a lot of things. Lots of things. I have to tell you about that another day. But like being near the sun, sometimes staying in the sun, having enough experiences in life, my left side. Thank you so much. Who would have forgotten this one? I can't remember. Explain. And number two, you have a right side. In particular, I'm speaking to him. Some kind of a spiritual experience. This would not be good. I guess it could be uh, religion living in the.